name on it. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. A light beam washes over the dance floor, bathing it in violet blue. Task complete, help Ravers start a nightclub, got 70 XP. Andre breaks into frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. Someone turns up the beat. And this is where we start getting the gifts on Twitter and so on of people dancing in the club. You should go with the flow. Join in on the experience. That tapping your foot. It feels good. It feels right. But what is this? What is this thing that Andre is doing with his limbs? Observe his movement. What are you doing, Andre? I'm dancing. He performs yet another strange pattern of moves, but it doesn't look very cool or modern. Honestly, it looks kind of lame. That soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing. We should talk about it. We should talk about your so-called dancing. Yes, my man. He jumps up and down with glee, his moves punctuated by the stroboscopic flash of the club lights. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? Mm -hmm. Audio waves thump against your ribcage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But there's a noticeable lack of something. Savoir Fair is 6 for an impossible check of 18. Dance fever incoming, no words, just dance. Uh, we'll ask about the hair first, though. It's to express my individuality. Sure. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure, with the fused together spikes, but it looks like he's balding. I mean, it's a bit rude to say, or is it because you're balding? Is it important for you to be an individual? Fair enough, or that's idiotic. Is it important for you? Of course it is. Otherwise, I'd just be another poor guy with no education and no money. General issue, man. Now I'm all that, and I have radical spikes. Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway. Alright, let's try it. It's not going to work, but I don't think I've got enough stuff to raise Savoir Fair anyway. You close your eyes and dream of the shapes your body should form to bring this strange music into life. For now, such ferocity of motion is beyond you. But just imagine the moves you could pull to this futuristic beat. That's interesting that Limbic System's got something to say about it. Puts a grin on your face just to think about it. Even a failed attempt gets the juices flowing and repairs some of the damage done by battles lost. If you up the dose and truly dance, who knows what will happen. Hmm. Goodbye, officer. Alright, so do I have anything that can actually raise Savoir Fair? I'm pretty sure I don't. It just takes Savoir Fair away. So, physical instrument, uh, insurance, nothing so far. Oh, okay, so I do have sunglasses that can do it. Uh, oh, and the pants. Okay, so it was a little bit higher than zero. Uh, oh, let's put this back on. Uh, yep, yeah, the pants take stuff away. Still not too much. Yeah. So I could have put two things on, which might have made it a little bit better. But otherwise... Okay. So, we did it. Uh, let's talk to a cell, because why not? Wait, is that a cell or is that Noid? She's whistling a melody. Her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Why does that trill sound familiar? Melody. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. And no, it's got nothing to do with contact mic. I wasn't going to. Contact mic is. Okay, fine. I wasn't going no, to. No, no. I actually wanted to thank you for getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. Well, there should only be one, unless you're counting Crabman. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Fair enough. Now, can you tell me about your associates? Sure. You helped us out. 
I can repay the favor. What do you want to know? Okay. So we got a cell to talk about her associates for 10 XP. Tell me about Suna. Oh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins. And she seemed oddly happy, like she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen, I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. That is a bit weird still. I just tried to stay away from the crab man. But he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Oh, he talks to Noid? What for? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? I mean, you could. Thanks, about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Andre. Andre? He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. She rubs her sides, but not full cold. Her shoulders are relaxed. She must have taken a hit, or she's on an upswing. He takes care of shit. Sorry. I mean, he's got a vision. What life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organiser. What has he organised? Nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organise around here either. He really wants this church thing to work. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. Andre's not super intelligent. I think we can tell. I've never seen him so psyched about anything though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate, like it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know. On life, on his mother's love. Relax, girl, we're police officers, but we're corrupt, rotten to the marrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit. I don't give a fuck. That should be you don't give a fuck. High on life? Uh, yes. Anyway. Uh, could it be that he's balding, him thinking it's his last chance? Is Andre your boyfriend? Joel, sure, let's ask. Is your Andre your boyfriend? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, is it also the fact that he's balding? Come to think of it, yes. <laughs> she laughs. He's in some kind of a self-destruction mode with that hair of his. Bleaching it like that. Probably wants to get rid of it altogether. I mean, Egghead can pull it off, so maybe Andre can. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Tell me about Noid. He's a four-burger, I guess. Like the rest of us. Okay. Maybe not Egg, I don't know about him, but... Noid and the rest are from Fulberg, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palaceum. He's real hardcore about the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean, do? Like, for a living? Yes. No, I meant for breakfast, of course for a living. No need to be rude about it. Yes. He's a carpenter. Trained and all. He's very good, he just doesn't have the mindset to work like that. In a shop somewhere. What kind of mindset is that? He abides by the hardcore, sir. You would have to ask him yourself. And you? Sir, I abide by the law. He gives you a switchblade smile. What is this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor Fulberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie Street up to Jamrock. Or as much as possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. Let's say I haven't been down Boogie Street. Oh, I'm sorry, have I not told you I'm a raging alcoholic who recently drank himself into an oblivion so deep he can't even remember what sounds like the biggest street in the city? Let's say I haven't been down Boogie Street. Okay, then you should go and take a look, I guess. Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might just do that if I make it there alive. It's unlikely I'll make it there, chest pains. Need to continue the drinking, but well, thank you. I'll do it if I can make it there alive. Yeah. She's, she opens her mouth like she's about to add something, but doesn't. It's just right, let's something. keep going. I don't know, man. Have you um, been down Boogie Street? Hmm. Yeah, let's be weird. Um, kind of? I'm gonna say yes. Well, I am. Okay. Then you should go and take a look, I guess. Oh, okay, well. Just pains. They do say death is an avenue like any other. I still think you'll make it to Boogie Street, though. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? What's the deal with Egghead? What do you mean? What does he think he's doing when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. 
He's the party boy. What's a party boy? A nod at music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offence if you like rock music, though. Rock music's called by me. Pachoo, pachoo. Swish. Your credentials as the resident future man of Revishaw are being questioned. Show her your hip with the times, Gramps. Uh-huh. Goddamn right. Rock music's the coolest. Rock music forever. No offence to Taken. Go on. You don't have to tell me rock is backward. I am the future man. I abandoned rock in the 30s, stupid rock. Uh, uh, rock music forever. Uh, personally, I can't say I'm that interested in rock. I mean, I'm not that big of a music buff anyway. So, yeah, no comment on this one, really. No offense taken, go on. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. Yeah, you need a hype man. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance, like sneezing makes you sneeze, or yawning makes you... Go on. Uh, anyway. Where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from, or who he is really. One time we were out partying somewhere in Backwater Forberg. Or maybe even Coal City. I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. The worst of the Bandleurs. A wretched heap of closed down mines, even west of Jamra, on the dusty slope of Montmartre, the remotest possible area of Revachon. No one even wants to exploit those people anymore. Egg was yelling along to some jam someone was spinning, all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines, there were mines? Yeah, it was in Coal City. He nods. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy dog sound all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Coal City, because it took us two days to walk back to the fore. He just wheezed the whole way. We never really asked why he came with us, or who he was. I think his name is Jermaine. Ooh, we might have a way to solve the egghead puzzle. People are sweet. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Actually, tell me about yourself. Me? Again? Yes, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. Silver bird? There's that phrase again. Really reminds you of something. What does that mean? It means I don't answer questions about myself. I'm a police officer, you have to answer me. Is there a law that would stop me from lying, though? No, but that's kind of like the implicit trust that you have when you initiate a conversation that the other person isn't going to lie to you outright. That would depend on the circumstances. The lieutenant taps his foot. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Some other questions. Sure. Ooh, reaction speed, legendary 14, catch the silver bird. Two dress code, avian investigator. Let's catch the silver bird. It, it flutters by your ear. ear. Hmm. It's what the Zemoyaki, the Gradian community in Revachon, call a person who never breaks under interrogation. It's an organized crime term. Ooh. Opasare the Argent. I remember now it's a Zemliaki term for someone who won't break under questioning, an organized crime term. Okay, well, we're not going to say this directly to a cell. So well, let's say the phrase. Excuse me? He casually brushes her hand through her hair. She's attempted to remain calm, but the phrase made her flinch. Ah, uh, so we're going to say it anyway. Okay. So, it's so someone who won't break under questioning. What do you mean? A silver bird. All right. My father was a Zemyaki. He died years ago. He was a bad man. Not a lot of good things to say about him and what he did. He bought the family a huge house. So we got to live, at least temporarily, in a giant castle in Jamrock, and then he died. What happened next? What do you think? The competition came and took everything away. It was like in a war zone. He's gritting her teeth. So after his death, we had nothing left, and we were in danger. My mother had to change her name, mine too. We left it all behind. Are you sure about that? What about this drug lab plan? It was a stupid idea. And I'm still disappointed I came up with it. 
Aren't there any local authorities who might look down on such activities? I mean, no, because that's why we're here, Kim, is because the local authorities is essentially the union who are taking things into their own hands. Come on, keep up. I took that into account, of course. Coordinated the operation with the debardeurs, else they might get unhappy. Ah, so what you're saying is Evra authorised it? Not in person, but I'll let them know. You can't do anything without the fat ones getting wind. It wasn't too difficult to convince them, really. Hmm. So Everard is corrupt. So he's trying to convince us he's doing everything for the good of the community. But we have proof, well, testimony, to say, yeah, you're in a drug lab operation. It's a good thing you ended that mess, though. I felt I was turning dad-wise into a corrupt business person. Unpleasant. I don't think I've actually confirmed I'm not doing the drug lab plan. Come on. This is all fine, but you don't have anything on Everard now. That's not how these things work. We should confront Everard about this. Maybe we can manipulate him using the information added to the list. This is all good to know, but let's leave it at that. No, we, we, we can try and use this as leverage to get our gun back. No, I don't think it would lead anywhere with Everard. He's just going to deny it. That is true, actually. Yeah. Have you seen Everard? Hmm. Uh, oh, my empathy went down because the, um, something ran out, so. Alright, that's it for now. Okay, well, let's go talk to Lloyd. You got us in, cop. I can't believe you got us in. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. You really came through for the hardcore underground. That's complete sync the signs with Noid for 10xp. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? Uh, he spreads his arm looking at the speed freak setting up shop. Is that a question for me, Ken? Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Sire, the tent, twas a security risk, and in here, sanctuary, twas only noble of you. These kids got spunk, I admire that. Better here than in that tent, it wasn't safe. I'm genuinely into the hardcore lifestyle, you wouldn't understand. I'm a corrupt cop, Kim. This is a corrupt scheme. I did it for mankind, for all of mankind. Better in the t uh, better here than in the tent. Okay. The lieutenant keeps it laconic. Noid, what do you think about the church? It's a miracle of carpentry. Dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it could be something more. A lot of questions. You say that as a carpenter yourself? I don't say much anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveller. Made me a bit manic, you know. I regret the time I dedicated to that profession and that work I collected. I say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. You're not going to ask me how I knew? Why? You're a cop. I carry carpentry tools. That is true. He did have those in the tent. I just never made that connection. He made it for us. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it, plus six more like it, on the coast here, was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something, but I understand. Alone on an uninhabited archipelago, forced to face themselves and nature. Pre-industrial quantities of solitude, the sea, perhaps something more fundamental. I would want to build a safe place for myself and my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. What style is this church built in? A cop who's into building critique. Okay then, this is folk DeLoreanism, lawmonger, huh? It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. I'm not just a cop, I'm an art cop. Is that true? Am I still... Yeah, I've got an actual art degree. So yeah, I am an art cop. Art of course. He nods appreciatively. Okay, what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. 
Everything between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just an homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you out? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. Vertical, thin, white, a false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures. Arches, spires. Put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know. Marriage shit. Virtue and tyranny. Marriage is shit, yeah. Hey, marriage is great. Marriage is sacred. This church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. Stands to reason it used to be white on the outside before the sea wind took all the paint off. Year after year, flake after flake, whitewashed clean, then covered in green moss. What did you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Sigma functions are left its place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of anodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. First, where is that quote from? What you're saying is you're not a big fan of the innocentic system? What you're saying is religion has stopped being hardcore? What exactly are you saying? Uh, where's that quote from? A Sarai's man who lived a long time ago. An ancient hardcore brother. So you're not a big fan of the innocentic system? A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history. Built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self-appointed intellectuals. It's false core. The way he says it, the force in false core is investing 20 kilotons of disgust. But you guys said the Ecclesiastes are all about love and hardcore before, remember? I even agreed with you about the Ecclesiastes being okay with this. And you proposed dance music will supplant the system? I guess he must have said this? I only said unity. One word. Figures of authority always misquote you. He points to his friends. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. And Egg is a demi-beast. You shouldn't listen to what people say. You should listen to what they are. That's good advice. I even agreed with you. But were you wrong? The founding party is okay with everything. Look around. They don't have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. And you propose dance music will supplant this system? Anodic dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with. Don't you have to be on drugs for that though? I don't need to be a narc. Don't you have to be on drugs for that? Cool, not cool. Shake your head. Uh, well, Kim's here, so uh, not cool. All large human gatherings are narcotic. Ask any such undertaking in history, this included. Chemistry is true to its word. Electrochemistry. <clears throat> there is a difference between narcotics and groupulation. One kills you, the other does not. The supercharged humanism that the innocentic system has been feeding us on giant city squares, that's not a drug. The sugar and wheat it feeds us is healthy. Forget it. It would become an imbecilic discussion. You two continue. It's more hardcore that way. I'm surprised you stepped in to begin with. How do you like the glasswork? Point to the stained glass window. I don't. Fuck her giving me the evil eye. That's her innocence, Dolores Day, mind your words. I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. You wanted to get inside the church and now you don't like the stained glass window. Uh, I mean, I don't really care if it is Dolores Day. Other people revere her, but, you know, me having no context for her as an amnesiac, I don't really care. So, we're trying to offer her some 
uh, what is it? Figurines. Well, we haven't been able to do it yet. So I am kind of getting some uh, some negative vibrations. No wonder. We have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with a giant mass murderer looking at ya. Not a good look for the club. Mellow man, mellow. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. She's the innocence of humanism. Seems to be a pretty big deal around here. But she's pretty. Yeah, but like, who isn't accused of being a mass murderer these days? The resettlement programs were totally okay. I'm a big fan of resettlement programs for some reason. I do feel there is something terrifying about her. Isn't she supposed to be an embodiment of the world spirit? Would you say she was, you know, human? I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. I do feel like there is something terrifying about her. There is. She is a party repellent and must be taken down before we can begin partying in here. No. That's not it. It's something more. Something closer to your skin. Take her down, crash it, destroy that window. Keep it, keep the beautiful sharp shards, keep her long face and her hair. Say nothing, stare grimly into the distance. Hmm. What do we want to say here? I mean, I don't really care that much either way, but... My thoughts are of weirded out but that might be because i've been picking the dialogue that says i'm weirded out <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. take her down destroy the window keep it say nothing stare grimly into the distance i would have liked this option if it was stare grimly at the window not just into the distance so i'm gonna say take it down will do the speed freak nods and pets the toolbox if it were a cat. No, Noi. Stop twisting my melon, man. People are going to love it. It'll be our thing. Plus, it keeps the cold out. True. Uh, she's the innocence of humanism. It seems to be a pretty big deal. Humanism leads to eating sugar and pigs. Humanism was invented to mass produce billions of humans. Billions of humans can mass produce hundreds of billions of pigs. And many, many more tons of sugar. She liked games. Her legacy, the thing we live in, isn't real life. It's a strategy for some kind of victory against a long dead opponent. But, yo, I'm only the noise. What do I know? But she's pretty though. She invented the beauty you're feeling. She and her glass cutters and iconographers, you set the standard all right, then you meet it. It's effective like that. But it is also very soft of core. That so-called beauty of hers. You're right, I like it harder core. And it seems like I like it soft because it's anything but soft core, it's terrifying. Hmm. Hmm. I think it is a bit strange that Dolores was able to sort of convince and persuade so many people. Like, there's no way anyone on Earth is as beautiful or attractive or as compelling as they are to become basically a prophet. So yeah, it's kind of terrifying. You may be onto something, Copper Man. She's got those mass murdering hips. Yeah, but who's not been accused of being a mass murderer these days? No one said Arno Van Eyck is a mass murderer. The anodic pioneer Reetfelt is not a mass murderer. He is not accused of mass murder. He thinks he doth protest too much. Likewise, no one says Jermaine Egghead or Andre are mass murderers. You can live entirely outside that suspicion. Billions of people go about not being guilty of mass murder. Just not her. True. Uh, the resettlement programs were totally okay. I'm a big fan of them for some reason. Are you a commie cop? I am? No. Lie. I am a commie cop. Then that's why. Communism's just a bloody humanism, if you ask me. As her love all over 